Good morning students. Today we are going to learn a new lesson in 10th standard science unit number 18 heredity. What is the name of the lesson? Unit 18 heredity. It is a phrase like begets like. The lesson start like, starts like this like begets like. What does it mean? Here, the children resembles the parents. That is, the offspring resembles the parents. So, that is the meaning of this phrase, like begets like. We are going to learn an interesting lesson called heredity. What is heredity? Here, before learning what is heredity, certain definitions we will learn. The first one is genetics. What is genetics? Genetics is a branch of biology that deals with the study about heredity and variation is called as genetics. Studying about the structure of gene, studying about the structure of variations in the gene, about heredity and variation is called as genetics. Now, we shall learn what is heredity? Heredity is the branch of biology that deals with the transfer of characters from one generation to another generation is called as heredity. All of us have received the characters from our parents. So the children or the offspring we have received the characters from our parents. So that's the transfer of characters from the parents to the children or the transfer of characters from one generation to another generation is called as heredity. The next term that we are going to learn is variation. What is variation? All of us are different except identical twins, all of us are different. Each of us have different characters. The color of the eyeball varies, the texture of the hair varies, the skin complexion varies, the intellectual power varies. All of us are different. This difference in characters, the difference in characters among the individuals is called as variation. What is variation? Variation is the difference in characters, all of us are different. That difference is called as variation. And this difference can be seen in species. So now again you know already what is this term species. Anyhow we shall recollect what is this term species. So species is group of similar organisms is called as species. We say that I say that we all of us belong to the same species homo sapiens nothing but human beings. So what is a species? So species means group of similar organisms, group of similar organisms it is called as species. Here so far we have learned three definitions. So first only when you understand the definitions you can uh, learn the remaining concept. The first one is genetics. What is the genetics? Genetics is a branch of biology that deals with the structure of gene, variation in gene, heredity and variation that is called as genetics. Next one is heredity, the transfer of characters from one generation to another generation or the transfer of characters from parents to offspring it is called as heredity. The third definition is variation. Each of us are different, no except identical twins. Each of us have different characters. So the difference in characters among the individuals we call it as variation. And next comes the species. So you should understand what is the species. Species means group of similar organisms. We call it as species. Now coming to this lesson, 
heredity it's a very important lesson all of us have received the characters from our parents some characters from our grandparents so it is all because of the hereditary units nothing but genes where is this genes located here in a cell we have nucleus inside the nucleus there is a coiled structure called chromatin reticulum and when this is separates out it forms the structure of chromosome and inside this chromosome there is a spherical shaped structure called genes and this genes is made up of a chemical substance called dna so first you learn the location of genes inside the cell the controlling center of the cell which is called as nucleus and inside the nucleus there is coiled structure called chromatin reticulum and this chromatin reticulum when it is uh, forms a thread like structure we call it as chromosomes and inside the chromosome there is spherical shaped structure called genes and this genes is made up of a chemical substance called as dna so genes are the hereditary units that is responsible for receiving the characters from our parents each of us have received all the characters through this genes from our parents okay now we shall see about a famous scientist called gregor johan mendel and he is called as father of genetics he laid the foundation for genetics so he lived in the 18th century and he was uh, born in zygosclovia in a silesian in a farmer family in silesian of zygosclovia in the year 1822 he laid the foundation stone for genetics and he is called as father of genetics because he da he has completed he has carried out so many experiments in the garden pea plants so first we will see his history and then we will see what are the seven contrasting characters that was laid down by grigor johan mendel mendel he was born he was called as father of genetics and he was born in the year 1822 in the farmer's family in the silesian of zigas zekloskovia zekloskovia kya here he was a, a priest he was a austrian monk he was a priest at the age of 18 he studied at the university of vienna he studied physics maths and natural science and he was the first scientist to do scientist to do mathematical calculations for scientific experiments he at the whenever he had his leisure time in his monastery in the so he was a priest whenever he had a leisure time in the garden he started growing garden pea plant so he started growing garden pea plant that is green peas plant we say in tamil pacha patani so he started growing this garden pea plant in uh, during his leisure time in his garden nearly he carried out so many experiments he carried out experiments and he found certain characters are different there are contrasting characters different in this pea plant so first he has carried out many experiments in this pea plant nearly 10000 experiments he has carried out and he found there are some seven contrasting characters that is different in this green pea plant okay so now so he was called as father of genetics so when he was informed that he was was father of genetics he was no more because after his death there were three scientists from three different countries they found out that he has to be called as or he has to be regarded as recognized as father of genetics so now we shall see why did mendel selected this garden pea plant so there were some contrasting characters 
why he selected this garden pea plant. So this pea plant, it is very similar like Clitoria plant. What is Clitoria? In Tamil we say Sangupu. Garden pea plant will be similar to Clitoria plant. And here, why he has selected, there are certain reasons why he selected this garden key pea plant. The first one is, it is a self-pollination plant. What is pollination? First one, it is self-pollinating plant. First, we will understand what is self-pollination. What is self-pollination? What is pollination means? Transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. So I'll just recollect what is anther and what is the stigma. Anther is the male part of the flower, whereas the stigma is the female part of the flower. So what is pollination? Pollination means transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is called pollination. Self-pollination means transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower of the same plant is called as self-pollination. So why did Mendel select this pea plant? Because there are certain reasons to select this pea plant. The first one is self-pollination. It is easily they can self-pollinate this plant. And the other reason is it is a bisexual plant. What do you mean by bisexual plant means both the male and the female part is present in the same flower. It is present in the same flower. It is called as a bisexual plant. And it is easily self-pollinating plant, bisexual. And it is an annual plant. It is an annual plant. For certain reasons, he selected this plant. And the fourth one is he, he was able to see different contrasting characters. They, were, they showed different contrasting characters. So Mendel selected garden pea plant. It is because of certain reasons. What are those reasons? The first one, it is a self-pollination plant. And the next one, it is a bisexual plant. Bisexual means both the male part and the female part is present in the same flower. And the third one, it is an annual plant and the contrasting characters were easily visible. So it was easily visible contrasting characters and the last one and it is also able, we can also able to easily cross pollinate the plant. Cross pollination means transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of different flower of the same plant or different plant it is called as cross pollination. So first I will repeat once again what is pollination. Pollination means transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower. It is called as pollination. That is pollination. Self means the same flower. Cross pollination means different flower. Pollination means transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. Self pollination means to the same flower. Cross pollination means to the different flower. So now we shall see what are the seven contrasting, seven pairs of contrasting characters that was seen by Mendel in garden pea plant. Here certain characters were dominant. Certain characters were dominant and certain characters were recessive. The character which is seen which is called as dominant character and the character which is not seen is called as recessive. Or the other way we can define as dominant means the character which masks the expression or which hides the expression of the recessive one is called as dominant character and the character which is not seen is called as recessive character. So now we shall see what are the seven pairs of contrasting characters that was seen by Mendel in this garden pea plant. The first one is seed shape, seed color, flower color, flower position, pot color, 
pod shape and the seventh one is the stem height. Totally there are seven contrasting characters. The first one seed shape, the dominant one is round. I am just writing the letter D for dominant and for letter R for recessive. So here this first one seed shape, the dominant one is round and the recessive one is wrinkled. So round means it will have smooth surface and wrinkled means the surface is rough. That is the meaning of this word wrinkled. Dominant means it will have smooth surface. Wrinkled means it will have a rough surface. The second one is seed color. Seed color, the dominant is yellow and the recessive one is green. And the third one is flower color. Flower color is violet and the dominant is violet and the recessive one is white. I just, I will just say how will this flower will be? So pea plant flower you have not been seen and because instead of this pea flower you can just uh, relate with the Clitoria flower. Clitoria flower in Tamil we say Sangupu. So this flower will exactly more or less it will resemble like Sangupu that is in Tamil. So here flower color the dominant one is violet and the recessive one is white. And flower position, flower position is dominant one is axillary or axial. Axillary or axial means the flower is away from the stem, just at the side of the stem. The flower is located at the axial or at the side of the stem is called as axial. And the flower position is terminal, that is recessive one. Terminal means the flower is found at the tip. Flower is found at the tip, that is terminal. Then the pod color. The pod color, the green piece that we have seen, is it? That is full green pea color, pod color will be green and a recessive one is yellow. Pod means where this is the shape of the pod. So where we get the seeds of green peas is called as pod. So this is the pod structure. So pod color, the dominant one is green. And the recessive one is yellow. Similarly, pod shape, the dominant one is full. Full means it will have a smooth surface or full or inflated. Inflated or full means it will have a smooth surface. And pod shape, recessive one is constricted. Constricted means it will have some constrictions like this. So that is called constrictions. Full is like this and constricted some curves will be present that is called as constricted then stem height stem height the dominant is tall and the recessive one is dwarf so seven contrasting characters let me repeat this all these seven contrasting characters first one is seed shape in seed shape the dominant is round, the recessive is wrinkled. Round means which will have a smooth surface, wrinkled means which will have a rough surface. That is the recessive one. Dominant the character means a character which is present, which is seen or which is visible is called dominant and the character which is not seen is called as recessive. So here wrinkled is it will not have a smooth surface, it will have a rough surface. And see color dominant is yellow and the recessive is green. Similarly flower color dominant is violet, recessive is white and flower position flower position axial axial means the flower is located at the side of the stem is called axial and terminal means the flower which is located at the tip at the end is called as terminal then pot color the color is dominant in uh, dominant is green recessive is yellow and pod shape the dominant is full and the recessive one is constricted and the last one stem height is tall 
and dwarf. So these seven contrasting characters was easily observed in garden pea plant by Mendel. So now what was his experiments? He carried out so many experiments and he did so many cross, he did so many hybrid varieties in this garden pea plant. So now here we are going to learn two cross Mendel's monohybrid cross and Mendel's dihybrid cross. The first one Mendel's monohybrid cross first we will learn how do they cross the plants and by what process they will cross the plant. Now suppose there is two plants here this plant pea plant will have both the male part and female parts in the same flower. How will they make cross? How will they cross the plant? So now suppose here one flower is there, here one flower and here one flower is there with some character. Now both the flowers they have male part, female part, here also male part, female part. This is one variety and this is one, this is a tall plant flower, this is a short plant flower. We will say like this, this is a tall plant and this is a short plant. Now how will they make cross? Now here suppose they will, they will carry out a process called as emasculation. What is this process? Emasculation. Masculation, masculine means male. So, E means removal of the male patch. That is called as emasculation. Here, so suppose consider this is a female flower and this is a male flower. So, here they will remove the male part of the flower. They will remove the male part of the flower and from this they will just transfer this male part to the female. So this is called as by the help of emasculation process this cross will be taking place. I will just repeat here there, this anther is removed. This anther they will remove and this, and this is called as emasculation process and the anther from some other plant will be carried to the female part of the flower to the stigma to the other flower. So from there is one flower both the here this pea plant flower they will be having both the male and female part present in the same flower. Both the flowers here also male and female part is present here also male and female part is present but to make crossing over in one part the male part is removed only the female part is kept from the other flower they will take the male part and that is called as crossing over. Removal of male part in the flower is called emasculation. So now we shall see what is this Mendel's mono hybrid cross. I told you he carried out, he found out seven contrasting characters which is seen in garden pea plant. So now we shall see what are those seven contrasting characters already we have learned. So what is this Mendel's mono hybrid cross? Mono means one. So here the cross taking place between one contrasting character is called as mono hybrid cross. The cross taking place using considering one, one character is called as mono hybrid cross. So now he selected the parents. So how did he select the parents? That is called as parental generation. How did he select the parents? See, always a tall plant will always give rise to a tall plant after generation after generation. Tall plant starts growing, the seeds after the flowers, the seeds after falling in the ground, again a tall plant will develop into a tall plant. So even after generation after generation, a tall plant will always give rise to a tall plant. Similarly, a dwarf. Dwarf means a short plant, dwarf means a short plant, the short plant will develop, it will mature, it will liberate the seeds and the seed starts growing. So a short plant will always give rise to a short plant. So a tall plant will always give rise to a tall plant, a short plant will always give rise to a short plant. This is called as pure breeding variety. This is called 
प्योर ब्रीविंग वेराइटी सच प्लान ही सेलेक्टेड सच प्लान ही सेलेक्टेड टॉल प्लान ड्वाफ प्लान दट इज कॉल्ड एज पैरेंटल जनरेशन सी फॉर द कैरेक्टर डॉमिनेंट सी द कैरेक्टर इज टॉल टॉल इज द कैरेक्टर कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग कैरेक्टर फॉर दिस कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग कैरेक्टर द फर्स्ट लेटर इज टी so at for tall the first letter is t so for the dust tall the gametes are written as t capital t capital t and here this is, uh, recessive one is written as small t small t so we are considering so mendel considered only one character one contrasting character that is what is that contrasting character tallness of the stem height to stem height so for stem height that the dominant is tall character and the recessive one is dwarf character so for the tallness capital t is considered capital is written in short form as capital t is capital t and the recessive one is small t small t dwarf means short plant now when a cross is made between the tall plant and dwarf plant he didn't get medium size plant instead he got only tall plants when a cross is made between a tall plant and a short plant that is dwarf plant he didn't get any medium size plant he received only tall plant what was the reason here in this gametes are t and t already you know what is gametes special cells involved in reproduction is called as gametes capital t small t so the gametes after in the f1 generation we f1 means first filial generation is called as f1 generation so here in the tall and dwarf plant in the gametes capital t here is one gamete and in dwarf is small t is one gamete when they fuse and they form tall plant that is here capital t is present the dominant character is present so in the first generation all the plants were tall all the plants were tall and in the f2 generation when such plants were self crossed or a self pollinated like that the plant was self pollinated there were four different type of plants in the f2 generation so here capital t capital t is here again here one capital t small t and small t capital t but first we have to write the dominant letter first first we have to write the dominant letter and then only we have to write the recessive here the dominant one is capital t and the recessive one is small t and here we can write like this small t small t so here there is three plants out of four plants three plants were tall three plants were tall and one plant was dwarf so the ratio is 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 and genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 so now again we have to learn what is this term phenotype the term phenotype is the physical expression of the character the physical character the appearance here the physical character is either it is a tall or short so if we see the human beings the physical expression so uh, how is their growth whether they are tall or high what is the skin color that is the physical expression it is called as phenotype whereas genotype is the genetic constitution of the organism is called as genotype the genotype is the genetic makeup of an organism is called as genotype what is dominant the characters which is expressed which is called as dominant the character which is hidden it is called as recessive character so here the phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 and the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 so see here in this phenotypic ratio 3 is to 1 all the plants all of the three plants they have capital t so three plants are tall and one plant is short so that is dwarf plant and the genotypic ratio see here two capital t is there so one and these two plants they will have one capital t one small t one capital t and one small t it is two and small t small t one so phenotypic ratio is 
3 is to 1 and genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now again we have to learn certain definition what is allele and what is allelomorph and now before learning here this uh, capital T this uh, expression can be written in a checkerboard that is called a Spunet square method. So I am just writing here what are the gametes capital T small t capital T small t. Here when we make a cross see here capital T capital T here first to the first we have to write the dominant character again here is capital T small t capital T small t small t small t. So this is called a Spunet square method. Spunet square method he was a famous scientist and he has given the same uh, crossing over in a checkerboard method it is called a Spunet square method. Now we shall learn certain definitions what is allele, allelomorph and we have to learn this term allele. See here allele means allele means the alternative expression of the same gene is called as allele. Now for this contrasting character height, height is a character for this the alleles are capital T small t. The alternative expression of the same gene. So this gene is responsible for the tallness of the plant or the height of the plant. What is this alternative expression is recessive one. So such a contrasting characters are called as allelomorph. What is allele? We should learn certain definitions. Allele is the alternative expression of the same gene is called allele. For the character height, the alleles are capital T and small t. For example, for seed color, the seed color is seed shape. Seed shape round is a allele and a wrinkled it is a small r, it is a allele. So such pairs are called as allelomorph. Such pairs are called as allelomorph. Allelo, allele means the alternative expression of the same gene is called allele. For the character stem height, capital T is the tallness, capital T is one allele. And for this alternate expression is T, that is a small t. The plant for the character height, either the plant can be tall or dwarf. And for the character seed color or seed shape, either the shape can be round, the other alternative form is smaller. Such pairs are called as allelomorph. Such pairs are called as allelomorph. Again, now in this genotypic ratio, you can see two capital T's here. So it is called as homozygous. Homozygous means similar pair of genes. What is homozygous? Homozygous means similar pair of genes. It is called as homozygous. And here is heterozygous means there is a different pair of genes. Here see here one capital T, one small t. One capital T, one small t. So it is called as heterozygous. Homozygous means similar pair of genes. Whereas heterozygous means dissimilar pair of genes. Here capital T, capital T. Here they have similar pair of genes. So it is called as homozygous. Whereas heterozygous here, one capital T, one small t, one capital T, one small t. So they both are different. So they are called as heterozygous. So learn these definitions. If you are thorough with the definitions only, you can understand the concept. Allele means the alternative expression of the same gene. For character stem height, the alleles are capital T, tallness and then dwarfness. So such pairs are called allelomorph. Homozygous means, homozygous means uh, uh, they will have similar pair of genes, it is called homo. Homo means similar, hetero means different. So dissimilar pair of genes, it is called as 
heterozygous. Now, we shall learn the second cross that was carried out by Mendel and it is called as Mendel's dihybrid cross. So, you know di means two. So, here Mendel considered two contrasting character and what are those two contrasting characters it is called as here considering two contrasting character is called as dihybrid cross a cross in which two contrasting characters is considered what are the contrasting characters are considered here seed shape and seed color seed shape the dominant one is round and seed color the recessive one is green and the seed shape is round wrinkled color is yellow green so he considered two characters so for round we can write this is the parental generation for round we can write capital R capital R and for yellow we can write capital Y small y and for the recessive one it is written like this small r small r small y small y and the gametes so this is the parental generation Parental generation means always round seeds with yellow color will always give rise to round seeds yellow color. Similarly, green color seeds that is wrinkled means rough surface. Rough surface wrinkled seeds will always give rise to green color seeds. When such a cross is made, here the gametes will be capital R, capital Y, small r, small y and in the F1 generation, here this is the F1 generation or first filial generation. So the plants will be, all these plants will be round yellow seeds. All the plants will be round yellow seeds and when such plants are crossed, when such plants selfing is made, when self pollination is taking place, so here the gametes are, here this is a dihybrid cross, capital, the gametes will be capital R, the gametes here will be capital R, capital Y, then small r, capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, small y. So it can be written like this, see here, capital R, capital R, small r, capital Y, small, capital Y, small y, it is crossed with the same type of plant, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, see like this you will get, so here these are the gametes, here, so the gametes will be like this, totally 8 we will get, so I have written like this, see here, capital R, capital Y, then small r, capital Y, capital R, small y, then small r, then you will get small y. So, when a cross is made, here 9, when this cross is made, 9 plants were, the ratio was 9 is to, the dihybrid ratio is 9 is to, 3 is to, 3 is to 1, 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, 9 plants were, 9 plants were seeds with having round seeds, round and yellow seeds, round and yellow seeds, 9 plants with the round and yellow seeds, 3 plants with wrinkled yellow, see here I have written here, 9 plants with round yellow, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, totally 9 plants with round seeds, round and yellow seeds, 3 plants with wrinkled yellow seeds. See here, I have written in yellow color, 3 plants with wrinkled yellow seeds and 3 plants with round 
but green in color three plants with round green in color and one plant with recessive character it is wrinkled green in color one plant with wrinkled green in color so this was a phenotypic ratio that is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so the ratio is very important the mono hybrid cross ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 whereas the phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 and whereas here the mendel's dihybrid cross the ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 here nine plants are with round yellow seeds three plants with wrinkled yellow seeds and three plants with a uh, green yellow seed green Uh, round green seeds and one plant with wrinkled green seeds now based on his experiments he put forth the three laws the three laws are the first one is law of dominance second one is law of segregation or law of purity of gametes and the third one is law of independent assortments the first one is law of dominance law of dominance is based on mendel's monohybrid cross so law of dominance is based on mendel's monohybrid cross whereas this law of segregation or purity of gametes and law of independent assortment these two laws are based on mendel's dihybrid cross so first we shall see what is this law of dominance law of dominance means when a cross is made when a homozygous cross is made the character which is expressed in the f1 is called as dominant character and the character which is not expressed is called as recessive character that is called as law of dominance what is law of dominance in a cross in a homozygous cross or in a homozygous cross in the f1 the character which is seen is called as dominant character or which is expressed is called as dominant character and the character which is not expressed is called as recessive character and a second law is law of segregation or purity of gametes law of segregation or law of purity of gametes here this it will usually takes place in meiosis what is meiosis meiosis means reduction division and this is law also is based on mendel's dihybrid cross when a homozygous or heterozygous cross is taking place the gametes each gametes they will receive or each gamete they will be segregating each is gametes will receive gene each gamete will receive its own gene okay that is called as law of segregation or law of purity of gametes the gamete the genes will not mix with each other when the cross is made when a homozygous or heterozygous cross is made the genes will not mix with each other and each gamete will receive the gene so for example when the plant with capital c and capital c is crossed with small c small c so here each chromosome will receive one gene so they will not mix with each other the during meiosis so here capital c capital c small c small c so this is called as law of segregation or law of purity of gametes so during the gamete formation the genes they don't mix with each other and um, the each gamete will receive one gene that is called as law of segregation or purity of gametes and the third one is law of independent assortment law of independent assortment means they can this is means randomness so randomness they can separate each or they can assort independently as they wish the genes can during the uh, gamete formation they can during the gamete formation or during the cross they can assort independently they can segregate or they can 
separate out as a randomness so that is called as law of independent assortment or you can this is law this law is also based on mendel's dihybrid cross so during gamete formation the genes they can separate out or they can assort independently so these are the three laws put forth by mendel based on his experiments the first one is law of dominance second one is law of segregation or purity of gametes and the third one is law of independent assortment so quickly we shall just recollect what are the topics that was taken today so first we learned what is genetics what is the definition of genetics heredity variation and we learned about the history of gregor johann mendel and he was called as father of genetics he laid the foundation stone for genetics and what was his contribution to the uh, heredity and evolution and he learned exclusively in garden pea plant he has he carried out uh, many experiments in garden pea plant he found out seven contrasting characters and what is dominant character what is the recessive one and uh, we learned about mendel's monohybrid cross the cross ratio is 3 is to 1 the phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 and the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 1 and mendel's dihybrid cross ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and based on this we learned the three laws law of dominance second one is law of segregation or purity of gametes and the third one is law of independent assortment so boys kindly learn this chapter it is an interesting one learn the definitions what is allele allelomorph what is phenotype genotype and uh, be thorough with this portion thank you as pea plants produce seeds only by self pollination he observed that tall plants produced always tall plants generation after generation under natural condition as shown here tall pea plant reproduced through self pollination here you can see two tall child plants similarly dwarf plants produced always dwarf plants generation after generation through self pollination hence grigor mendel termed the tall and dwarf plants as wild types or pure breeding varieties then he crossed a tall plant with a dwarf plant produced progeny and calculated the percentage of tallness and dwarfness in subsequent generations when a pure breeding tall plant was crossed with a pure breeding dwarf plant all plants were tall in the first filial generation denoted as f1 There was not any medium height plants or dwarf plants. This means that only one of the parental traits that is tallness was seen and not the mixture of the two. When such a F1 tall plant was allowed to have self pollination, both the tall and dwarf plants appeared in second filial generation called F2 in the ratio of 3 is to 1. This indicates that both tallness and dwarfness were inherited in the F1 plants but only tallness trait was expressed. The first experiment of Mendel considering the inheritance of a single trait which is height of the plant tall or dwarf is called monohybrid cross. Expression of morphological characters as tall or dwarf plant, violet or white flower is called phenotype. the expression of gene or chromosomal makeup of an individual for a particular trait is called genotype 
Let's take a look at the diagrammatic representation of modern hybrid cross. Mendel took one tall and one dwarf pea plant for cross breeding. He found the child plants were tall. He considered these child plants as first filial generation plants. Then he used a tall plant from first filial generation to self pollinate. He found that both the tall and dwarf plants appeared in the ratio of 3 is to 1. He called these plants as second filial generation plants. Grigor, Johann Mendel, worked out the first ever scientific experimental study on heredity, and he is called the father of genetics. Mendel observed variations in the characteristics of garden pea plant, which he had cultivated in his monastery garden. Mendel was curious to find out the results of crossing of pea plants with the variation in traits. Let's study some of the visible contrasting characters that Mendel observed in the garden pea plants. Seed shape. Round and wrinkled. Phenotype of progeny was round seed. Seed color. Yellow and green. Phenotype of progeny was yellow pea. Flower color. Violet and white. Phenotype of progeny was violet flower. Pod shape. Full and constricted. Phenotype of progeny was full. Pod color. Green and yellow. Phenotype of progeny was green. Flower position. Axial and terminal. Phenotype of progeny was axial. Stem height. Tall and dwarf. Phenotype of progeny was tall. 